so you guys can go back and look at it if you want. Um, okay, so so here we have some made up data. Um, and then here is our average, right? And we can do the same thing. We could do like this. We could do like this. We could do like this. Okay, so that'll make this one, make this one mean, max, min, and n, and then standard deviation, standard error. Okay, so for this, all I'm going to do is change this average to max. I'm just going to make this dude min. And I'm going to make this dude count. Okay, so now I'm getting the makings of all the basic stuff. Standard deviation, it will calculate it for you. So just like the other one, standard deviation, select the range of the data. And that's your standard deviation. So that's all easy. The standard error, you guys have to calculate yourself, which is a little bit more complicated. So, um, so, so I'll just say what it is. Uh, for, for the kind of samples you guys are doing, this is it's standard deviation divided by the square root of n minus one. So standard error, so, so just, just Intellectually, the standard deviation in a normally distributed population, right? Like a, 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 um, a, a bell-shaped curve population. Standard deviation represent plus or minus one standard deviation. It will count, I can't remember off the top of my head now, 67% or something of the data will fall within one standard deviation, right? We can have a second standard deviation, a third standard deviation. It basically says how peaky or how lumpy, how together, or how spread out is the data is essentially what that's describing. So a small standard uh, deviation means that the data is really up and down, like Omicron, right? So the Omicron peak is all of a sudden like, woo, it swooped up really fast, and now it's woo, swooping really down. So that's gonna have, in terms of the, the, the duration or, or the, the, you know, the timing, it's a very narrow distribution versus something like, um, what the hell else do we have, uh, Delta, the Delta variant was over many, many more months, right? And so it sort of ramped up a bit more slowly and it went away more slowly. So that would have, if we're looking at the, the spread of the initiation day uh, or, or, or days that the days that the United States is dealing with that, it's going to be much larger. The problem is the standard deviation is highly sensitive to the sample size. So, and, and I also should say, well, yeah. I shouldn't say that. No, it's not sensitive to sample size. It's sensitive to the magnitude, how tall the hump is, how tall the peak is. So to control for that, we try to control for that with sample size. And so, and so, uh, uh, so that's why we use standard error. So all that standard error is, is still that standard deviation is the nut, is the main part of the, the core of it. Um, and then we standardize it by, by how, how big our sample size is. And that helps us to be able to compare. So standard deviation is still great. If we just have one population, if you guys just sampled one species of tree and you're like, hey, how variable is the population? Standard deviation is what you would use, right? You'd be averaging that. But the issue is what you guys are trying to do is intellectually is you guys are saying, hey, beach one, beach two, beach three, beach four. So it's actually, we're trying to compare the district. Statistically, what we will we'll eventually try to do is compare the hump of this beach to the hump of this beach to the hump of this beach and see if they're different or not. And so for that, we need to have a way of standardizing it because sometimes we have this number of samples, sometimes we have that number of samples, sometimes the samples are relatively low um, magnitude, sometimes they're really big. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type equal STDEV, which is the which is the um, the Excel equation for standard deviation. Pick the range again. And I just need to kind of make it do a little bit of extra stuff here so we're sure we're not going to get funky. And then we're going to divide it by the square root of the sample size. Now, you could do some of this by hand and do it like so. If we just look at this and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, n minus one would be seven. So divide by the square root of seven. But 
maybe sometimes you guys have variable data sets and sometimes you have through 30 fibers and sometimes you have a hundred fibers, right? So, so it's not always gonna be necessarily the same sample size. So then what we can do is we can use the command for square root. So SQRT is the Excel formula for square root uh, of N and N is the sample size. So we can tell this thing to count. that and then I'm going to close that and then I say minus one and then I'm going to close the like that okay so that's the that's the standard error of this made up thing and while that well that so this formula now if I come in here and I delete number nine it's still going to be correct right so to be correct. And so, um, so I can set this up and then have, and then, you know, as, as a template and then sort of paste it into my chunks of data. And so I can do it once and then it'll correctly have the, the output all the time. There's other ways to do this, to be clear, but this is the way that will always work no matter what data you have and no matter what data set, like the, this, this simple approach. So, so now I know what my average is, the max, the min, my sample size, how many, how many samples are in my, my grab. Uh, standard deviation, which you probably won't use, and then standard error. Um, so yeah, so standard error again is, is this standard deviation divided by n minus one, uh, divided by the square root, excuse me, of n minus one. Does that help? Yes. Thank yeah. You. Okay, cool. All right. In, I will in my other graph, I was using only standard deviation for the error bars. Yeah, so, 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 so the other reason we use standard error is because um, if the sample sizes are approximately the same, ideally be exactly the same, visually, so, so the kind of stuff that we have, and we have a, a, an error, a bar one, bar two, and then we have error bars around them, standard errors. Visually, if those, if those two error bars do not overlap, there's a good chance that's going to be statistically significantly different from one another. Just visually looking at, it. not always you have to check, and there's there's caveats, of it. but by and large, as a, as a as a rule of thumb, if those standard error bars overlap, probably not going to be statistically significantly different. That doesn't apply to standard deviation. You can't make that statement from standard deviation. So so standard deviation is a great thing to use when we're just simply showing a distribution of the of the trees, of the student heights, of the length of the plastics just doing that like just saying hey this is what we found and that you might want to do that in your in your paper for example in your in your like initial <clears throat> we're not there yet but when you guys get to write your results the first little bit is is kind of describe that what the data what you found right and in that description hey we found you know 300 fibers or we found whatever 700 fibers out of these you know 36 samples um, uh, the fibers, you know, uh, overall fiber length range between oink and oink and right. So like that, that paragraph, that sort of intro introduction to the results, not telling us what the, you know, things are statistically significantly different or not or, or whatever, but just sort of saying, Hey, big picture, listen, people that haven't thought about microplastics at all. Here's what we found. This is how big, this is how small this is up down. And, and if you did a graph, let's say the distribution of all your microplastic sizes, Standard deviation would be a useful statistic to report there, but we wouldn't show that in a in a figure where we're trying to compare population one to population two or beach one to beach two to beach three kind of.